what would you say if I said that I could bring him back? I guess I could bring him back. Yes, I could bring him back. All right, hold tight, you might hold tight. You might want to stand back because they want to hold on. It's down and it's down and it's down. St. John, St. John, spitting out some more words, fully intact. Jack, Jack, put it around in the rap. Small John, small John, living like a gnome. Hit you with my lyrics like a bullet to your dome. Tonight we're going to be doing something that's chaotic, chaotic, and sucks. But there's no way to know it. Hello there. Welcome to St. John Forward Radio. I'm your host, John Forward. How are you doing tonight? Back live in the studio. Uh, last week was a uh, was a pre-recorded from uh, from the four story walk up uh, studios with uh, with my good friend, uh, international comedy superstar Brian Giles. I hope you enjoyed listening to that as much as I enjoyed uh, recording it. Um, yeah, Brian was in town for his uh, his uh, recent appearance at uh, Punchlines Comedy Club. Uh, talked about that a bit. Um, you know, I uh, I've, I've talked about this before, but um, I kind of miss having guests on the regular. I'm getting a little tired of the, uh, and I don't know if you guys are too. I get zero feedback for the show. I don't know what anybody likes, but. Uh, I don't know. I, I I would like to mix it up more with some uh, with some guests. Um, maybe if I've got something, I feel I also really enjoy doing the deep dives into uh, into various topics when I've got time to to dig into it. Um, but uh, I, I like having guests. Before the pandemic, I used to have uh, mostly uh, mostly my fellow comedian friends on the show, um, and uh, I don't know. I think since coming back to the station, I've had uh, old uh, ball breather <laughs> Nick Ferreira on a couple of times. I don't know what's going on with that guy. I haven't he doesn't seem to be posting on Facebook as much. I haven't uh, I haven't spoken to him since the great uh, drag drag queen story time fiasco. Um, kind of curious what his take is on it. Now that I think about it, we've got some distance. It's less of a hot issue. I don't know. Maybe I should reach out. Um, Nick, if you're listening, maybe we could have a, have a talk about that. I'm not, uh, I'm not thrilled with the situation, but I'm curious about the situation. Um, had old, uh, Maxime Bernier on, uh, I've had, uh, Adam Landry was on a few weeks ago doing a bit. That was fun. Um, yeah, I had Brian Giles on who else have I had on? I've had Phil Smith on a couple of times to talk video games. I think we're overdue for that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm I'm a comedian, and you know I'm plugged into uh, to this community of people who uh, who regularly makes an attempt to uh, talk into microphones in an interesting way. So I'm uh, I'm leaving that uh, resource untapped. So anyway, I uh, reached out on. Uh, on facebook to the um you know our uh, our private group that you're allowed to be in as long as you uh, don't threaten to murder any of the other comedians um and uh yeah i got i got a few uh, i got a few takers um nobody for tonight to be fair i didn't really reach out to anybody uh in particular a few people i just kind of made a post like hey who wants to come on sometime and a few people, uh, I'll probably ask all of them to be on, everybody that responded. And I kind of uh, put in the comment, like, hey, anybody? I kind of realized this afternoon I have absolutely nothing to talk about. So I kind of, uh, hey, who wants to who wants to be on tonight? And I, I got no takers. Um, that's not necessarily a no. That's more likely a notification. Hey, John Forward also commented on this thread. Are you going to click on that, really? Do you want to see? You don't need to necessarily see every John Forward comment. Sometimes it's spicy. Not really. Sometimes it's just interpreted as spicy. But anyway, I'm a comedian. I know a lot of other comedians, so we have we have some good conversations, but uh, not, not just necessarily about comedy. Um, I'm I'm open to other uh, other types of guests, but. Uh, 
you know, I don't know these people. Most of my social life is uh, doing going to comedy shows. Um, speaking of which, uh, I don't have anything this week to plug. Um, I I will be. I did uh, volunteer myself to uh, to to be a extra set of hands. I will not be performing um, at the uh, St. John Marina this Friday, the twenty third. But uh, my pal Shane Ogden, also a guest on the show that uh yeah i had tyson ardo on i need to get more guests on the show um but anyway uh i i did the marina show over the summer and had a lovely time uh they've they've got the uh the second show coming up this friday and uh i was, I was talking to shane at no jokes bard on thursday and uh you know, I was, I was kind of making some suggestions for you can do this and that. And, you know, he asked, he asked our, my friend, my Arif Hussein also, it's been a while since I've had, I could, I mean, I could probably have Arif uh, and Brian on this show, but I, which I, I, I think actually I have had Brian on. I don't think I've had Arif on maybe we'll have to pick something uh, political to talk about. So I, I really don't want to burn the, uh, the four story walk up energy so uh generally if uh, if we have something to talk about i'd rather save it for there um because uh four-story walk up too spicy for campus radio but uh st john forward radio only occasionally so um uh where was i going with this so anyway i i i'm volunteering to uh to help out a bit at the show on uh, on friday at the marina so I'll enjoy watching it also. Um, and, you know, I don't mind putting in a slight amount of work to save me from having to spend Tony dollars. But you, you who have, who are not a VIP such as myself, you pay the 20 bucks. It'll be worth it. Lots of good people on the show. I don't have the lineup in front of me. Um, what's going on? We, as I, as I said, just came off of uh, No Jokes Bard this past, uh, this past week. It was on Thursday night, which I don't love. Um, you know, mostly I, I would love to do the show every month, the third Saturday of the month. Um, but that's that's not always possible. This the summer was um, a, well, previous summers, it was dicey because of the live music. But now that the boardwalks all torn up, um, I don't know. There, there was some complications. I actually could have done it on uh, on a Saturday in August, but uh, that was um, on the third Saturday of, of August, I believe. Uh, that's not in my phone. That's odd. Um, I think that's when I was at um, at Punchlines, um, so didn't want to do it that weekend. And then I had uh, I had John Scove Nielsen's bachelor party was one weekend. Another fellow comedian I should get on the show, and he's been on before. Um, and then the wedding and then, uh, my, my friend Craig's wedding was, you know, August was a write-off, uh, September, I was hoping to get back to it, but, uh, the, the old powerful money-making machine emo night was happening this past Saturday at McGill's. So anyway, uh, we, we opted for Thursday, which to be honest, the actual show, the shows on Thursday have been pretty good. Um, for the last, what's it been? This will be the fourth one in a row. I think we did June, July, August, and, uh, September on Thursdays. The actual show has been really fun. Um, lots of fun people on it, telling fun things and having fun reactions and fun audiences. Um, personally, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. I've always like, I've been running no jokes bard since 2014 and, in my head, I'm imagining people would rather go to a comedy show on on a on a weekend night so that they can have some drinks and not have to worry about getting up for for work or school or whatever in the morning. Um, that's mostly why I would prefer to have it on a weekend. Um, just because uh, you know when we when we have a Saturday show, I've got all day on Saturday to really, I mean, I usually don't spend the whole day because I'm lazy, but I have the option of really sitting down and figuring out what I'm going to do for like my main sets of the night at the beginning. And then after the, uh, the intermission and if I'm really feeling really on the ball, I'll actually, uh, 
you know, talk them out out loud. I haven't been doing that as much lately. Um, but, uh, you know, when it's, uh, when it's on a work night, I'm working until at least five and then I've got to eat, at least eat, sometimes make uh, supper and, uh, just, just don't have a lot of time to, uh, to plan. And I, I, I got to get home. I got to pound, pound some food into my mouth, maybe look over my stuff. Um, and then get down there and, and then set up. And then uh, I, I really like the hang after No Jokes part. Usually when we have it on a Saturday, we like to, uh, you know, most of the people on the show, so when people are traveling from out of town, they usually will uh, will head back, uh, depending. Um, but, you know, I like the post-show hang, which uh, suffers a bit when it's, on, uh, when it's on a Thursday. I mean, doing a Friday night show is also which is also kind of difficult just because I don't have enough as much time to prepare, but at least, uh, you know, can hang out, have some drinks afterwards. But, uh, anyway, I don't know why I'm complaining. I, you know, I did pretty well. I thought, you know, there was a couple of, I tried, I tried, I tried out one, uh, one new bit. It was only like a, like a, like a, the, I'm using the the word bit um, very generously. It was, it's it's more of an idea that I spent about sixty seconds on, and it didn't go well. Um, I, I still feel like there's a little something to it, but it I don't know. As presented, did not work out very well. Um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a good show. Um, I'm I'm and you know good good turnout. I think pretty much a full house i mean like it's not like people were packed in their standing room only but most of the uh the actual chairs had butts in them um yeah there was a couple of people that came in uh later that didn't have anywhere to sit i don't think they were there for the show i think they were just there to order food but um anyway good turnout but i'm i'm continuously baffled and it's and it's not just uh, it's not just this one venue, but um, I don't know. It's it's been my experience doing comedy in St. John all of these years. Um, when 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 you have a, a venue that's willing to put on the show, you would think that they would want as many people to come to the show as possible. And uh, St. John venues that I have dealt with do not want to promote the comedy show at all. I don't know if that's specific. My, my assumption is that they don't want to necessarily, I don't know, be at, I, I, I don't know. They like, they want people to come, but they don't want, they don't want to advertise it. They don't want to help in the promotion in any way. Um, my, my guess is that the fear is that if they do too good of a job promoting it, then some of their regular customers would come and not like it and be mad, which I don't know. I I guess that's a possibility, but that's a possibility. Even if you don't promote, I don't know. I don't know. The, The whole point of having the show in a venue that has an existing customer base is to somewhat tap into that i don't think it's a good idea to put on a show on a night where it's all the place is already packed with regulars and you're just interrupting their usual good time um i actually uh took a walk took a, took a walk around uptown this past saturday night kind of s- scouting out maybe um you know, I'm not thinking about leaving McGill's or anything like that. But, you know, if I wanted to put on additional shows, I kind of had my eye out for uh, for other venues that around like early evening on Saturday night don't have many people at them. So my value proposition, anybody out there who happens to be listening, um, how would you like to have some customers? Uh, which, which is better than um, what was... Which that's how it started when I first started doing the show at the R Bar, and then uh, over time, for reasons that I'm not a hundred percent certain, there's probably various factors. But oh, uh, we were we were at the R Bar for I want to say I don't know five years. Does that sound right? Maybe four or five. 
and uh you know it was packed house early on and then over time either maybe because of the quality of the show took a dip i don't know um or just people got tired of the tangling with the the crazy regulars that uh that are at the r bar but you know it, it got to a point where um there were fewer people coming for the comedy show then were leaving because they were there for karaoke and didn't want to deal with my business um so we got the boot from there so ideally and any other comedians that are listening to this if you're looking to secure a venue for a comedy show you don't want to find a place that's already busy you want to find a place that is open and staffed that has no customers so if you bring five people then you're doing them a favor so um and that, that's that's really honestly that's kind of how things started with mcgill's they less so since covid but they think they're trying to get back into it. it's kind of like dance club vibe later on but nobody's generally there until like 10 or probably closer to 11 o'clock or even midnight um so you know they're they're already open you don't want them to have to bring in staff and pay somebody because then if nobody shows up then you know somebody's lost money nobody likes that um but yeah ab absolutely no promotion this month from uh from mcgill's did not even share the event on on their page um which is weird to me because either last month or maybe the month before there was some genuine efforts made. They shared the event on their page. Um, I mentioned this on the show. Somebody would have, I mean, it's not complicated, but somebody would have had to do some Photoshopping to create, like, they made a separate Instagram, like, square picture that was different than the uh, the show poster that I put in the Facebook event. Seemed to have made an effort, and then I and I made a I made I made an effort on my part to uh, to thank the owner. Like, hey, I appreciate it that uh, you know you guys helped out with the promotion. We had a good turnout, and then nothing. And you know, this isn't the only venue. I don't know what it is. Musicians out there, I feel like the bar when when a band is playing at a bar, the bar seems to be the one that's promoting it as they're promoting. Hey, come to this place and. We've got drink specials and we got this and we've got this band playing from this time to this time. Come on down. Um, they're making the events. They're making the posters. They're taking out radio ads, spending money. Can't get a break for comedy, though, but maybe we didn't need it. We had a good turnout. So anyway, I'm just complaining. It was a it was a fun night. Um, everybody involved um, seemed to be having a good time. I the the biggest difference between uh, McGill's and the R bar, aside from the, the clientele, um, I, I seem to have done a decent job getting most of the bartenders on board so that they don't dread coming into work when there's a comedy show on uh there's one guy who uh who works there i was talking to on saturday he he's you know I, I run into him when i'm not doing a show and he says hello we have a nice chat he might try comedy sometime um there was uh there was a second bartender there that i had i had never seen before i don't know if she's new or she just never happens to uh to work on the same nights that we're doing the show but uh, she was asking me when the next one was, and I was like, "Oh, are you enjoying it?" And she said, "Yes." So that was that was nice. And uh, you know, there was one of the other bartenders who used to be kind of our, and I, I feel bad because I don't know any of these people's names. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not good at remembering names, but I'm not sure if I was ever told any of them. They don't exactly have name tags, and it's I don't know. I don't ask. I, they know my name because I announce it into a microphone every week, but I don't know any of the bartenders' names. I'm sorry. Um, we had kind of a regular bartender that was working almost every night that we had no jokes barred for a good stretch. And uh, I don't know if this was on purpose or not, but she she arrived for part of the show um, a couple of months ago with some friends and stuff. So that's that's interesting um Arif was telling me that one of the uh the young lad bartenders a couple of, at, at some point over the summer was kind of mouthing off about how much he hates the comedy show and blah 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 i don't think it's somebody who's ever he only worked the comedy show that one time as far as i know i don't think he was speaking for everybody but anyway um 
yeah the i i feel like i i get along with the uh with the staff um i don't go out of my way to antagonize them like i have in the past at other places um so anyway that's that's a big help but before anyway that's enough blathering on about uh, about uh, no jokes bard come see it the next two months i've got locked down um save me a bit of phone tag which i seem to have to do all the time to get these dates booked but uh, saturday october 15th and then saturday november 19th december who knows we'll probably be on a thursday again because it's christmas party season so check those out um and like i said i've got the i'm, I'm helping at the marina show on uh, this friday the 23rd and then uh, i'm looking forward to uh to next week on uh thursday the 29th and it's haha's in hampton volume three with uh who else is on that show uh brian godso will be hosting and uh on the show will be uh myself uh steve fudge jill graves coming out of retirement uh matt white and uh jason guptel so check that out in hampton 10 bucks i'm really looking forward to that i get to do a 15 minute set so nice to do a little bit extra time most of the sets i've done for the last little while have been 10 minute sets but anyway come see all that stuff because uh much like my favorite band clutch who has a new album out with this song on it we strive for excellence said no jokes barred so check that out after the song in three minutes we'll talk about mr pp the conservative man Welcome back to St. John Forward Radio, new clutch song off Sunrise on Slaughter Beach, which uh, 
I'll be honest. It's my favorite band. I'm always super pumped when they have a new album come out, but it's not bad, but I don't know. It's not really grabbing me. Um, I, I really, uh, I, I enjoy clutch quite a bit. I play them on the show pretty regularly. I have, uh, several pieces of their merch that I wear on the rig. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I need to sit down and give it a good headphones. Listen, this, this one's there's, there's no bad songs, but it's not really grabbing me in the way that, uh, pretty much every album that since I started listening to them has come out. But anyway, check it out for yourself. Clutch new album. Um, so anyway, uh, in classic, I don't have anything to talk about, um, fashion here on St. John forward radio when I don't have a specific topic in mind. Um, I, I, I go to the old telephone and, uh, you know, I, I see, I see a lot of news articles come up, um, in, uh, you know, in, in the algorithm on my, my social feeds and on the Google. Sometimes I read them. Sometimes I just pull it up on my phone and kind of save it for later. So, uh, when I've got a show where, uh, I don't have anything that I'm all fired up about. I mean, I did a debrief of a amateur comedy show for 20 minutes at the top. Um, so, you know, I, I go into the archives and see what, uh, what news articles, uh, have, uh, have come out recently and, uh, came across, uh, of, of this one. It's, uh, it's an opinion piece from the globe and the mail, um, which, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, most of the, uh, the corporate media is hot trash, um, globe in the mail. I don't have any particular bone to pick. Usually when I'm, uh, when I'm, when I'm picking apart these things, it's usually a CBC article because they are the worst. Um, but pretty much all of these, all of the big mainstream, uh, news organizations, um, take a lot of money and handouts from the, uh, the government. And as such, their opinions are all pretty uh, suspicious. Um, side note, I'm not going to talk about this, but apparently global news, despite the piles of cash that are being, that is being thrown at them by Trudeau, apparently they're uh, hanging on by a thread. Um, could be that uh, you're terrible at journalism and nobody listens to you anymore. That might be an option, but no, they, they need to get government subsidies to, um, to stay in place. But anyway, um, we're about halfway through. I will remind you that uh, you are, in fact, listening to local 107.3 FM live on the radio in St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, Also, I'm streaming video on uh, Facebook and YouTube right now. Um, If you want to leave a comment... I can uh, I can pull those up live. I think the comments only work on YouTube and my John Forward comedy page on Facebook. I don't think comments on my personal there's a video there's a version of this that also goes out on my personal profile though I don't think I see those comments. It, it just confuses the stream yard. But anyway, if you want to chime in, um, can't do really a full back and forth live on the air when I don't have like a producer. Um but uh, I, I've I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of hand wringing in the past week or so. Um, uh, Pierre Polyev, uh, he was uh, he's he's the new uh, leader of the Conservative Party as of uh, I think well September 10th is at least when he gave his speech. Um, so you know I've. I uh, would not consider myself to be a conservative um, in really any definition of the word. Um, However, conservative politics in 2022 are slightly less egregious than the other side at this time. So I'm I'm finding myself more conservative sympathetic than ever i'm not happy about it but it is what it is it's just the other the other side has gone way off the deep end um and you know i've also i'm i'm older 
I, uh, I'm less swayed by vote buying and empty promises of free stuff from politicians. So, I mean, the other parties are at a disadvantage because it's, they don't really have anything to offer other than that. Um, but, uh, you know, I've just my, my history as a, as a political participant, um, most of my, my young years in my twenties, um, I, I think I think I voted for the NDP pretty much every chance that I got. Um, I think the last time that I voted was for uh, for Jack Layton shortly before he died, and then uh, and then since then I got more into kind of the libertarian and anarchist stuff. And for a while, I was kind of I did not want to participate in the system. I, I, you know, and you can go listen to last week's episode with Brian Giles, but, um, uh, I mean, I don't believe in the democratic process, to be honest. Um, I, I think it's the least bad of the options or, well, I thought so last week we kind of made the case that, uh, you know, in the wake of, uh, of the old Queenie dying, um, there is an argument to be made that a monarchy is slightly less bad than, than a democracy. It's a compelling argument. I'm not fully on board, but I, I get it. I definitely think that democracy sucks. Um, it's basically mob rule and creates a situation where it cannot work well, no matter what. And it's, I don't know, it's a popularity contest. And, uh, it's, uh, the people who can win in a democratic election are not, they're not the best people. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I opted out of participating because first off, I think the whole system is, is immoral. And I mean, I still have sympathy for the 1% of even if there was a, a democratic election where it was a gigantic landslide, 99% voted for this particular person with these policies, I would still have some sympathy for the, the 1% who didn't want that as long as they're not infringing on anybody else. Obviously. I mean, if there's, if 1% wants to reinstate slavery, I'm also not on board. Screw them. Um, but you know, that's, that's aggressing on another person, which I'm not, I'm not cool with as a rule. Um, so I mean, I, I just had a gross feeling about participating in the democratic process because I wasn't, I wouldn't be voting for any of these people um, until like very recently. I mean, in the, over the last 10 years, none of the political parties have had anything to say that I wanted to, to contribute to at all. Um, I, uh, my memories of the Stephen Harper years were, that that was a bad guy, but I don't know if I was just a dumb 20 something year old and I didn't know any better. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Stephen Harper wasn't as bad as I remember, but that's how I remember it. And I, I think of conservatives as these old stuffy, you know, church people that hate fun. Um, now it's the other side who are the stuffy church people who hate fun. Not so much. I mean, not, christian church they've got their own silly religion that's based on nonsense but i mean so is, so is, they're all based on nonsense um anyway not getting into we're, we're just talking about the religion of government right now not the other ones um but uh you know as as i said i kind of had uh, i had nick Pereira, local uh, ppc candidate on out of curiosity um but also at at the time the ppc party were the only ones that were uh that seemed to be even i mean they're all every all i assume all politicians are lying but i prefer it when the lies are ones that i like versus the lies that i don't like um so the the ppc was compelling to me in that i was casting a vote against all of the covid restrictions that i was 100 percent opposed to and they were the only party that was on board with that so again despite the guests that i've had on the show i am not promoting these i guess i'm offering 
them an audience. I mean, I, as I've said before, I am trying to radicalize their audience, not the other way around. Um, but I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to vote for anybody in particular. You vote or don't. I don't care. Um, if there's somebody that speaks to what you want, fill your boots. Um, so anyway, I chose to vote for the first time in like 10 years, and it was for the PPC party. I didn't think they were going to win. I I thought they would at least get some seats. That was that was a surprise to me in the last election. Um, that and it was very disappointing to uh, in my fellow Canadians that not necessarily that they didn't vote for the party that I want, but based on the election results, where I don't think anything really changed much um, compared to the prior election after the good chunk of COVID that we lived through Canadians as a whole seem to have been like, yep, more of that, please, which was very disappointing. But then, you know, the convoy came in and I got to see that, uh, that I wasn't the only person who was raising an eyebrow or two about all this nonsense. And, um, so yeah, the, the convoy made me feel much better. Like, feel much better as a Canadian and felt like I was a little bit less alone, that there was more people that were, that I shared values with than I thought. And, um, so one of the positives that came out of the convoy is at least the conservatives callously looked at that situation and were like, let me get in on that. And now they're pretending to care about freedom they may also actually, but I mean, it wasn't until the convoy came around that they even started paying lip service to it. And, uh, Maxime Bernier is, uh, rightly pointed out that Pierre Polyev was not, he's changed his tune a little bit and he wasn't, he was all, he had no problem with any of this stuff for a long time. Um, so, but now, now we've got a, par a conservative party, which, um, recently elected Pierre Polyev, Polyev -ver. Um, and the things that he says, I agree with mostly. Um, he seems pretty good on economics. Even Andrew Scheer, who I also didn't like, he's been, he's, he's had some pretty good tweets over the last couple of weeks. It's funny, all these conservative types, they're really very good on economics but then the moment that they get into power, then they just spend like crazy, the same as the rest of them. So anyway, I am reluctant to fully drink the conservative Kool-Aid, but they've been talking a good game lately. And uh, I've noticed a lot of uh, hand-wringing about uh, Pierre Polyev winning the uh, conservative leadership. Lots of people who would never vote for the Conservative Party under any circumstances, no matter who was in charge, um, complaining that, oh, the party's been taken over by this wacky conspiracy crypto. What I mean, it's it's silly that this is like the extreme ultra libertarian that he's being made out to be. I, I, I've heard that he's a bit more of a war hawk than I would prefer, which is, which is a huge mark against this guy. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the foreign policy is for the PPC. I asked old Mad Max about it briefly and we didn't get really into it, but anyway, a lot of people who are not conservatives are mad about who the conservatives elected and everybody's pretending like, Oh, the moderate conservative has no home now as if Pierre Polyev is some extreme radical. No, he's not. He's slightly more in that direction, but not, not super hardcore. Um, but uh, yeah, like he won in a landslide. I think he got 68% of the vote. And I don't know how representative whoever's voting for the, the party leader is compared to the voters as a whole. But 68% versus his uh, his closest candidate, his closest competition was 16%. So seems like this is who the conservatives want. And this is the new direction. Um, from what I can tell, everybody that's complaining about this is just upset that the conservative party seems to have elected a leader that might actually win an election, which is unfathomable. 
Um, so anyway, I came across this article uh, from the Globe and the Mail called uh, The Rise of the Unserious Politician. And uh, let's here, hang on. Let's go into the there we go. The rise of the unserious politician. And it's got a big picture of uh, Pierre uh, PP there. Um, so I assume this is a hit piece of some sort. And I haven't read it yet. I wanted to do it live. Um, but I, I can kind of sympathize with the I mean, I don't care. I, I mean, a serious politician, an unserious politician, they're all just spokespeople for the new world order, if you, if you want to go down that path. But um, I, I have noticed in the wake of, of Trump, the kind of showman kind of thing where there's lots more smack talking, which I think is more entertaining. I don't know if that makes for a good leader, but I did notice um, from the, uh, the, the debate that they had um, for the conservative leadership a few months ago. Um, this clip is really the only thing from the whole thing that I watched and is weird. It has kind of a roast battle vibe to it at the end where everybody's like, oh, and they're all kind of laughing. So anyway, let's play this short clip before we get in the article. I don't know if this is what they're going for in the article, but when I see this title, The Rise of the Unserious Politician, this is the kind of stuff that I that I think they mean. Start with the trucker Start convoy. With the trucker something convoy. we've already been discussing. We've already been discussing. You've been criticized. You've been criticized for your support for the trucker, trucker convoy. One of your fellow of your candidates has even said, said you should be disqualified from leadership of the party, of the party uh, based, uh, based on your engagement with, engage with the convoy. As we all know, As we public, all know opinion public opinion on the trucker convoy is sharply divided. divided. The Trudeau government and the mainstream media have gone to great lengths to vilify the truckers. And back in February, you said that you were proud of that. Right. That's right. Has your opinion, Has your on, the opinion on the trucker convoy changed, convoy changed since? since? And is your and support, is your support of the truckers, of the truckers a liability, a liability moving, forward? moving forward? No and no. No and no. My position has not, not changed. I said at the very I outset, the very before, they even, before arrived, they even arrived, that I simultaneously, that I simultaneously stood with the law-abiding law peaceful, peaceful truckers who were fighting for their livelihoods, their livelihoods and, liberties, and liberties while, while condemning, condemning an individual, individual who breaks the law, who breaks blocks, the law critical blocks critical infrastructure, and behaves, infrastructure and behaves badly. That is the position that is I took position then. That is the position I take now. Now, Mr. Charest learned about the trucker convoy on CBC, like other liberals, and he misrepresented them. He believes that he I believes should be censored. censored. He believes I he should believes be canceled from this leadership from this race and disqualified, and disqualified in, his in his words because I don't share, I don't his, share liberal his liberal viewpoint. That is the kind, that of, is the kind of cancel culture and censorship, and censorship you, would you would expect from Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Trudeau. But instead, we're getting instead it from this liberal on this stage. On this stage. <laughs> Frankly, Mr. Frankly, Charest, Mr. Charest, for you to talk for you about, to law, talk and about order law and order is a little bit, is a little bit rich, given that your party, given that your, party your liberal party, liberal took a half million, million dollars of illegal, illegal donations, donations when you were the head of that party, of that the, party, party the average trucker, trucker has more has integrity, more integrity in, his in his pinky finger, finger than you had than in your entire, your entire scandal play scandal liberal, play cabinet. liberal cabinet. So, so, so I... So I do stand, I, I do up, stand for up for the freedoms of Canadians, and, Canadians I and I acknowledge that the working, that the working class, class has been demolished, has been demolished in, this in this country over the last, over couple, the last of years. couple of years. We don't need, we don't need elites, elites who've, been who've been able to rely on, on special on contracts, contracts with Huawei, with Huawei to, to look down, to look down, on, them down on them and call them criminals. criminals. Instead, we need Instead, to stand, we need up, for stand up for the people who are struggling and give them hope for the future, and that's what I will do. So the... Repeatedly calling him a liberal and dropping the cancel culture bomb and like the cheers and the jeers it's it's weird i don't know how i feel about it it's weird though and i mean he does he he was a little bit late to the party maxime bernier was on board with everything the truckers were doing from day one less so from this guy but anyway let's uh Let's get into the article. I've wasted enough time. We've got 15 minutes left, but this is pretty short. We'll see if we can get into it. I'll try not to pontificate too much. Um, so the time has come to call for the return of a disappearing breed, the serious political leader. By that, we mean an elected official of any stripe who tells voters that governing involves hard choices that there are no simple answers to complex questions and that an endlessly repeated hashtag isn't a policy. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable so far. 
Uh, someone who does not feed public cynicism about government by attacking its institutions or exaggerating its failings for political advantage, or who does not cause the same harm by breaking important promises or by putting themselves in blatant conflict of interest, or both. Well, that obviously I disagree with. Um, maybe, I mean, if the government was doing a good job, there would not be this public cynicism. And I don't think it's a politician's job to pretend that the government and these institutions are doing a better job than they are. And I don't think it's possible to exaggerate the failings of any of these things. But anyway, back to the article, which is written by Blair Gable from Reuters. Reuters. I don't know how to pronounce that. I've never said it out loud. Who doesn't see party politics as a game whose only rule is winning and who doesn't promote a culture of partisan antagonism that makes it impossible for supporters to acknowledge any validity to the other side's positions? Who thinks trolling opponents on social media, trading in sarcasm and insults, and spreading disinformation are activities that are beneath the role that they've taken on? I mean, we're, we're mixing and matching stuff here pretty blatantly i mean the trolling opponents on social media and sarcasm and insults that's something that i see i don't know how i feel about it but this whole spreading disinformation nonsense especially about lpp it's it's silly so anyway i question this whole thing based on that and who has the confidence to listen to expert advice and the ability to rise above partisan politics to achieve important goals for the common good? That's all nonsense. The experts have been corrupted. We've seen it. Rising above partisan politics to achieve goals for the common good is a fairy tale. This is, this is the religion of government. Around the world, in too many democratic countries, this one included... Politics has lately been dominated by too many unserious politicians of both the populist and the traditional variety. Uh, Britain has just seen off Boris Johnson, a prime minister with a disastrous mix of high intelligence, short attention span, postmodern contempt for the truth, and an allergy to the hard work of leading. Mr. Johnson's cynical support for Brexit was only slightly less awful than his incompetence at negotiating a settlement with the European Union, and he was often not to be found during the pandemic, other than at drunken parties at 10 Downing Street that violated lockdown rules imposed by the occupant of that address. The weight of hypocrisy sank his premiership. I don't know a whole lot about uh, breakfast or boris johnson but i mean okay in the united states the belligerent populism of donald trump led straight to the january 6 2021 attack on capitol hill and an attempt to overturn the u.s government that is a wild claim i'm not going to get too deep into that but it's silly he never accepted that the presidency came with duties, instead seeing the position as an opportunity for enriching his family, feeding his bottomless ego, and settling personal scores. I would agree that every politician who has ever been elected does all that stuff to some extent, just maybe not as blatantly. They're better at pretending. He continues to insist that the 2020 election can't have been legitimate because he didn't win it. In Canada, the Conservative Party has just named a new leader, Pierre Polyev, a lifetime politician who spent months selling party memberships by claiming that a nefarious group of shadowy global elites is conspiring against can average Canadians. You know, the sort of ideas that used to be exclusive preserve, preserve of Marxist-Leninists. All right. Well, that's all. That's all. Not the this lifetime politician that's being thrown out. Is that like who are the who are the outsiders really that are not lifetime politicians that are even close to? I mean, we've got Justin Trudeau who's only there because his dad used to be in charge. I mean, lifetime politician. Okay, nobody seems to care about it but this is this is one of the barbs that keeps getting thrown out there i don't really understand it 
And I mean, the nefarious group of shadowy global elites, they put it that way to make it sound silly. But I mean, the World Economic Forum exists. I don't think that's debatable. They're out there. They're writing books. They're giving speeches. They're not hiding. And a bunch of influential politicians, including Justin Trudeau, go to these meetings. Now, the, these articles, when they talk about all the conspiracy of the World Economic Forum pulling the strings, nobody is arguing that the World Economic Forum is picking up the phone and be like, you have to do this law. Nobody's making that argument. But we've got this group of people who makes it very obvious that they try to lure in important, powerful people to to kind of get them on board with their agenda. Um, now, I mean, they in their heads, I think they I think they think that they're doing the right thing. I mean, in the best case scenario, they think that they're solving climate change and whatever. And instead of, I mean, it, this is basically Scientology for politicians, from what I can tell. And they've got a very specific agenda. They're, and all of these politicians, including Justin Trudeau and many others, I mean, I, I had heard that Pierre was there at some point. He denies it. I don't, I don't really know either way. But it's not a conspiracy theory that the World Economic Forum exists and has influence over a lot of powerful people who then drink the Kool-Aid and then voluntarily promote these policies that they've been kind of sold on by being in this kind of this kind of exclusive club. Um, but anyway, back to the article. With inflation gripping the globe, no serious politician would suggest that firing Canada's central banker, as Mr. Pierre as Mr. Polyev did, is the answer. Well, we could also just abolish the Bank of Canada altogether. That's, I mean, that's, I don't know how serious that is, but uh, our monetary policy is terrible and that's what's causing inflation. But anyway, nor would they, unlike the conservative leader, peddle dangerous financial advice such as that you can opt out of inflation by opting out of the Canadian dollar and putting your savings into cryptocurrency. I don't know what uh, what PP has been saying about crypto. I see that seems to be one of the main talking points for people that are criticizing him. Um, I mean, crypto is doing bad now, and it seems like kind of a Ponzi scheme, but our currency also is, and... I mean, the idea of cryptocurrency is better than the idea of our current fiat currency that is just not based on anything either. It's currently not a wise investment, I would say. And I don't know, maybe he is, but I, I feel like the crypto angle is exaggerated. But anyway. But any anger and distrust Mr. Polyev is exploiting is there for the taking, thanks in part to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who has governed for seven years and has not always been a loyal servant to the common good. That's a pretty charitable way to put the reign of Justin Trudeau. Has not always been a loyal servant to the common good. That's, that's one way to put it. His government has done notable things from renegotiating NAFTA to bringing in a real plan to lower emissions, a real plan to lower emissions. What is it? Are the emissions being lowered? He's got seven years. Are we doing better or worse now? To making sure the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion gets built to reaching a deal with provinces for low cost daycare. Okay. Uh, but he himself has repeatedly been caught in conflicts of interest, vacationing with the Aga Khan, We Charity, the SNC-Lavalin affair that a more self-aware politician would have avoided. I don't know who Aga Khan is. Um, the We Charity thing? I, I don't know. That's, these are not the most egregious Trudeauisms, as far as I can tell. 
And he deliberately politicized COVID-19 vaccine mandates by waiting to call an election in 2021 before promising to impose them on federal employees and on domestic plane and rail travel. A serious politician would have gone to great lengths to avoid turning vaccines into a wedge issue. Mr. Trudeau did the opposite. I agree with that. It's impossible to expect perfection from politicians. Oof. But it's not too much to ask that they try to use their positions responsibly and make competent governing their priority. This country has problems that need the attention of responsible leaders. The healthcare crisis and inflation are just two on a long list. The last thing Canada needs is more politicians working to add their own names to that list. Which, I mean, okay. It's not written by the CBC, so it's it's not as bad as uh, as I thought. But I mean, there there are some points. There's definitely there's definitely been a change in the demeanor of our politicians. But I mean, we live in a democracy. If you are on board with that system. The politicians are supposed to change along with the population. That's kind of the point. So if these tactics of populism, which I which I still, I mean, I still can't quite wrap my head around why populism is a bad thing. To me, populism just means appealing to the population to regular people and what they care about which i feel like is what the politicians should do um but this this writer and i think a lot of people just have this uh this fantasy version in their head of this noble politician who doesn't have any self-interest and he's got decorum he or she or they them whatever has decorum and some dignity but i mean that just seems elitist to me that's not what people want um it it seems that people want the shit talkers and i mean as long as they're talking good shit i'm okay with that um so i don't know it pierre polyev doesn't i mean he's definitely gotten some media training he smiles more um he seems he seems a little bit funnier than he used to be when when i first noticed him he seemed um when he first started making uh waves by you know giving speeches in uh in parliament and stuff he just i didn't think that he was going to be the guy because he, he didn't seem like somebody that was going to connect with people but i mean people like him and it was a 68 percent landslide victory I don't know if I'm going to vote for him or not, but now I'm in the situation where last time I voted for the PPC as kind of that was my protest vote against COVID. But now that we've got a political party that could actually win, who is also against all the COVID stuff, which is kind of on its way out anyway. But the financial aspect of it and again he's probably going to change his tune once he gets into office but i mean the the economic policies that pierre polyev maybe not the crypto piece of it seem like big things right now and would help with inflation and trudeau and jagmeet throwing around extra cash and increasing government spending he's right that that's going to make things worse so anyway i don't know how i feel about it um I mean, I don't, I don't care. They're all liars anyway. Like I said, I prefer it when the lies are the ones that I like than when the lies are the ones that I don't like. But anyway, um, that's the end of the show. Uh, my name is John Forward. Um, this has been St. John Forward Radio. It's every Monday night from 9 till 10 p.m. Um, check out the uh, show at the St. John Marina this Friday, the 23rd. And then uh, if you live in Hampton or want to drive, come uh, come see me do the Ha Ha's Comedy next Thursday, the 29th. And then uh, next week, or next month, another No Jokes Barred. But anyway, that's the show. Thanks for listening. Good night.
This is Sarah Rankin, your friendly Fundy Fringe Festival director, and you're listening to Local 107.3. Are you an artist, band, or record label? We want you to send us your music so we can put it on the radio. Not only this station, but stations across Canada. Check out earshot-distro.ca 